Amir Saram Balkar, Secretary of City Civil Corps, other dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, my wonderful friend Anand Nayak, Ghansham Mishra, Mr. Desai, <laughs> and all my fellow lawyers. The topic given to me today deals with a very, very interesting aspect. Article 227 of the Constitution of India. Now, as we all are aware, that Chapter 5 Part 6 of the Constitution of India, I repeat, Chapter 5, Part 6 of the Constitution of India is titled as High Courts in the States, which begins from article 214 and runs up to article 231. Among these 18 articles, the most important are two articles. Article 226 and article 227. 226 we all know is a writ jurisdiction, prerogative writ jurisdiction of the High Court. But article 227 is a supervisory jurisdiction of the High Court. Now, there is a lot of confusion among the bar, including the high courts, benches across India, that what is the difference between 226 and 227? Now, the common practice is, we lawyers, when we are confused, we do not take the confusion on ourselves, we confuse the bench. That is our practice. So what we do is, we put writ petition under article 226, read with 227 of the constitution of India, let the high court's office deal with it. That's their headache, we have put it, because we are confused. So that is why it seems Samir must have thought that let this confusion be clarified. <laughs> what is what is 226 and what is, can I just hand it over to you? What is 226 and what is 227? So let me tell you that although this article 227 finds place in the constitution of India, it is a historical provision much earlier than the constitution of India. It is way back in 1861, during the British era, High Courts Act of 1861 was promulgated. And under High Courts Act of 1861, section 15, is ipso facto identical to article 227. So since 1861 this provision is there. It's a historical importance. Now 1861 High Court Act section 15 was replicated in Government of India Act 1915-15 under Section 107. 
when the government of india act 1915 was promulgated section 15 of high court act 1861 was replicated here in the government of india act and then came the mother of the constitution of india that is government of india act of 1935 because if you read government of india act 1935 you will find that the major portion of the constitution of india is borrowed from government of india act 1935 and article 224 of the government of india act 1935 replicated section 15 of 1861 and 107 of 1915 but there was a mischief played in 1935 act and that was when you read 1935 act you will be able to understand what was the mischief article 227 a uh, 224 added sub clause 2 in the government of india act 1935 and what was that sub clause 2 that sub clause 2 snatched away the judicial superintendence of the high court that means article 2 section 224 of the government of india act by sub section 2 left the high court with only administrative superintendence sub subsection 2 said that the high court not with the standing whatever in the sub clause 1 high court does not have the judicial superintendence over the subordinate courts this mischief was there by the britishers which was fortunately while drafting the constitution of india under the chairmanship of dr baba sahab ambedkar he had the brilliance to catch this sub clause 2 that this is mischievous and therefore that sub clause 2 was deleted so when that 224 was replicated as 227 in the constitution of india that sub clause 2 was removed so what remains today article 227 although is silent it does not talk about judicial supremacy it does not talk about judicial supervisory or superintendence but because that sub clause 2 is removed our high courts have assumed that power and therefore 227 though titled as supervisory jurisdiction carries on with the judicial superintendence also although it does not speak in the open terms so what as on today 227 speaks it says that high court shall have superintendence over all the subordinate courts including tribunals within its jurisdiction sub clause 2 of article 227 states that what is the meaning so sub clause 2 explains it saying that by supervisory jurisdiction including judicial supremacy the high court can call for the returns returns means records of the subordinate courts the high court can call for the records of the from the sub subordinate courts or tribunals 
नंबर टू टू ट्वेंटी सेवन गिव द पावर टू द हाई कोर्ट दैट विद इन द एरिया ऑफ इट्स ओन जुरिस्डिक्शन द हाई कोर्ट कैन मेक रूल्स फॉर द प्रैक्टिस एंड प्रोसीडिंग्स so what do you read and follow civil manual and criminal manual here that power is driven under article 227 when the high court formulates these rules of practice including आवाज नहीं आ रहा है आर कर रहा है आपका If I am not audible, please tell me. Your voice is audible. Audible. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, let me know if I am not audible. Yeah. But there are people. There are many more. All right. I'll take care. So, Article two hundred and twenty-seven states. Sub clause two has three portions. First. the high court can call for records from the subordinate court number 2 the high court can make rules including forms for practice and proceedings and number 3 a b c sub clause 2 the third is that the high court can prescribe for a table of fees which is to be charged by sheriff by clerks by officers by attorneys by advocates and by pleaders how many categories six table of fees of six categories high court can prescribe now here i pause for a moment because this table of fees have six categories sheriff clerk officer attorney advocates and pleaders which advocate follows this table of fees today we all know that that's such a figure which cannot afford you a cup of tea or a piece of pan in the whole day but why that table of fees is important then it's a very vital role and that is the reason i'm telling you that although it's a very very nominal figure and you if you read that you will laugh you will foo foo it you will mock it hmm mere train ka pass bhi isse mehanga hai main court pahunchunga hi nahi to table fees lunga kaise lekin fir bhi wo table of fees is important because when the costs are imposed on your suit on your application being rejected there are cert certain times suit dismissed with costs isn't it all of you must have experienced do you know how that costs are calculated that table of fees and that is why we all happily pay the costs acha कॉस्ट लगाया कोई बात नहीं बिकॉज दैट इज सो फनी टू यू दैट द कॉस्ट चार्ट डू नो द ऑफिस ऑफ एवरी कोर्ट प्रिपेयर द बिल ऑफ कॉस्ट बिकॉज जज ओनली पास इज एन ऑर्डर वन लाइन द सूट इज डिसमिस विद कॉस्ट और द पिटिशन इज डिसमिस विद कॉस्ट जज इज नॉट बॉदर वॉट इज द कॉस्ट द जॉब ऑफ कैलकुलेटिंग द बिल ऑफ कॉस्ट इज फ्रॉम द ऑफिस and what does the office do it falls up back upon the table of fee prepared by the high court under article 227 sub clause 2 sub clause c and 
हाइएस्ट एडवोकेट फी आई हैव कम अक्रॉस इन दैट टेबल ऑफ फी फॉर द एडवोकेट वेर आई लॉस्ट सम सूट and the cost is imposed upon our clients do you know how exorbitant that cost was 45 rupees the client did not even grudge he did not even bother and come to say otherwise had it been 45000 he would have said kya saab dubo diya फोर्टी फाइव ही अपील से फिकर नहीं साहब अपन अपील में जाएंगे आई सर फिकर नहीं वहां भी कॉस्ट लगवाएंगे वो भी पचास रुपए होगी इंपॉर्टेंट यू मे बी चार्जिंग वॉट एवर बट वेन इट कम्स टू कैलकुलेशन ऑफ कॉस्ट दैट टेबल ऑफ फीस इज इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यू पे फॉर द प्रोसेस फी और फॉर द summons to be served you to pay bailiff fee through sheriff that table of fees comes for your rescue thereafter this is sub clause 3 table of fees sub clause 2 sub sub clause a b and c c is yes one more aspect C is High Court is entitled to prescribe for forms for the entry of books accounts prepared by the staff of the court so whatever accounts books are maintained that forms are also prescribed by the High Court and sub clause 4 says that not with the standing whatever is stated in provisions 2 and 3 of article 227 227 does not apply on armed forces tribunal whatever the tribunals have been formed under defense of india act or armed forces 227 does not apply there so that is an exception under sub clause 4 of 227 now the interesting part to understand that 227 applies both on civil proceedings as well as on criminal proceedings like i said the petitions made under civil proceedings generally what people do is writ petition under article 226 red with 227 of the constitution of india similarly normally people file petition under 482 of crpc for quashing of the fir but for your knowledge 227 comes for your rescue there also because 482 is a statutory power whereas 227 is a constitutional power so i will tell you interesting story 1947 when the country was getting liberated in himachal pradesh amarnath had a shop and varyam singh went to take that shop on tenancy annual tenancy agreement at the rate of rupees 175 per annum rent this agreement was executed what and that agreement had a clause of renewal after the lapse of one year that if the tenant wants to continue in the shop he can renew the tenancy agreement varyam singh who was the tenant did not bother to renew the tenancy agreement but continued in the possession 
1948 two years rent became due. He remained in possession, neither renewed the agreement nor paid the rent. So Amarnath filed a suit for eviction. For the areas of rent, on the ground of areas of rent. The court below issued notices to Varyam Singh, who ins immediately paid two years' rent of 1948 and 49 in the court. The suit was dismissed because the ground for areas of rent is met with. All the areas are deposited, the suit is dismissed. But what Amarnath forgot to continue in the possession in the year 1950 as well and did not pay the rent again. So a fresh suit was brought for eviction. Varyam Singh did not pay the rent for 1950 also. A fresh suit came to be filed. Now this Varyam Singh must have been advised by some very good lawyer. So what he did is when he received the second suit for eviction, this time instead of depositing the rent, he made an application for fixation of the fair rent, saying that 175 rupees per annum is too huge, an exorbitant rent. So the fixation of fair rent must be done by the court. This second suit of eviction is dismissed on the ground that fixation of fair rent application is pending and till the fair rent is decided there cannot be arrears because it is not fixed as yet Amarnath felt cheated went to appeal appeal was dismissed that yes lower court is right so he filed a 227 petition Now, as I said, this was Himachal Pradesh and court of judicial commissioner was having the power of the high court who considered this 227 petition, issued notices and set aside the lower court's judgment as well as the appellate court's judgment and directed that the possession be handed over to Amarnath, who is the owner. This time, Varyam Singh felt cheated. So, Varyam Singh went and filed an SLP before the Supreme Court of India, stating that Article 227 of the Constitution of India does not give the power to go into the facts of the case and set aside that judgment. And Ladies and gentlemen, this is a landmark judgment of Varyam Singh versus Amarnath, 1954 Supreme Court. 